What do you need to consider when using simulation for training? Simulation is a technique for practice and learning that can be applied to many different disciplines and types of trainees and has been widely applied in fields such as aviation, medicine and military. It is a technique to replace and amplify real experiences with guided ones, often immersive in nature, that evoke or replicate substantial aspects of the real world in a fully interactive fashion. Immersive here implies that participants are immersed in a task or setting as if it were the real world. The skills which can be enhanced with the use of simulation include technical and functional expertise training, problem solving and decision making skills, and interpersonal and communication skills or team-based competencies. Studies have shown that simulation improves learning, simulation is effective in developing skills and procedures that require eye-hand coordination, and in those that call for ambidextrous maneuvers such as bronchoscopy and other endoscopic procedures. Also, simulation training helps learners prepare to deal with unanticipated medical events, thus increasing their confidence. Studies have also identified several key considerations for the development of simulation training programs. Downs, Downs and Rowe found that for simulation training to be most effective, it must be paired with feedback and debriefing. They state that feedback must be linked to learning outcomes and there must be effective debriefing protocols following all simulation exercises. Therefore, at the heart of all simulation style training exercises must be a focus on delivering high quality feedback as well as debriefing sessions post training. Other factors worth considering would include the cost and benefits of developing a simulation training program, the amount of time required for the training to be effective and how well the training transfers between the simulated exercise and the real world. The fundamental assumptions of simulation based training is that the skill acquired in simulated settings are directly transferable to the performance of the actual task. For example, Hill Tander and colleagues demonstrated improved surgical performance in anaesthetized animals after simulation based training. Sturm and colleagues also showed transfer was possible by successfully applying skills in simulator based training to operative settings in surgery. When designing a training simulation, it is important to address two types of simulator fidelity, physical and psychological, in order to maximize transfer to the real world. Physical fidelity refers to how realistic the simulation looks, sounds and feels to that of the actual task. It is a physical experience of being in a simulator. High physical fidelity may not be needed depending on what the goal of the training is. For example, part task training or training while avoiding training trauma. Psychological fidelity is the extent that the simulator engages the trainee in the types of cognitive activities involved in the real world task. For example, a cockpit simulator that requires a high level of attention from the pilot and produces psychological effects such as stress and workload is considered to have high cognitive fidelity. This is because it duplicates the cognitive simulation in the real world system. Therefore, it is extremely important to consider transfer and fidelity when using simulation for training and in the design process to make the simulation representative of what the experience will be in the real world situation.